You're listening to Regional Entertainment News. Don't move that mouse. I am at the Hard Rock with Larry Thomas. How's it going today? It's going great. It's a lot of fun. Just watched uh, someone eat an eight and a half pound burger. I well, say so you and me we both have something in common. We both enjoy journalism. Cool. Yes, that nice. was my first major. Do you still try to follow that with all the news? Yeah, well, you know, news is so much different these days, isn't it? I mean, it's like very few people read the paper anymore, and now it's all, it's its kind of, it's being told to you by somebody, rather than you reading it, and the, the choice of words and, in, you know, and uh, punctuation that the writer puts in there is what used to give you the flavor of the story, but now you're like listening to somebody else tell it to you. You know, there's much less reading of it, so it's different. I want to say, do you have any journalists that you actually followed or that were uh, inspired you to do that when you were in college? Well, you know, when I was growing up, uh, you know, we had the greats, Cronkite and, and Huntley and Brinkley, and, uh, you know, and, and it, was, it was a different kind of thing then because news... It tried back then to be totally real news, you know. Uh, like when the networks all first started on television, it was mandatory to have news without commercial breaks. So it wasn't part of the hype that that sold Wheaties or anything like that. So it was it was so much more real in those days. So I really respected those guys because they were just reporting, you know. They weren't editorializing so much, and so they, those guys inspired me, and, you know, guys like Sam Donaldson, and, you know, not these days, I mean, there's still great people out there, you know, uh, Anderson Cooper and Wolf Blitzer, they're still going, and they're, they're great people. I want to say, you've had a successful career ever since, starting on Seinfeld, and then you did a cameo in the Austin Powers, how did that come about? The, the Austin Powers thing? Yeah. Well, I had actually, my manager was trying to get me the part of number two. It was actually in the casting breakdowns because, you know, I know now from meeting him and talking to him, Mike Myers actually wrote it, wrote that part with Robert Wagner in mind. But at the time, it was a low-budget movie, and Robert Wagner was in, I think, you know, like semi-retirement, and they couldn't afford to pay him what he was used to getting and so he was really taking his time to think about whether he wanted to do it or not and up till the very last day of casting as far as my manager was concerned I was still being considered and so literally you know 4 p.m. they were going to decide by 5 she called me and said they decided on the celebrity that it was written for but they want to know if you want to do something in the movie. And I said, really? Yeah, sure. An offer? You know, because up till that point, none, nothing had ever been, like, offered to me. It was all auditioning. So I said, yeah, I, you know, I love Mike Myers. And I didn't know Robert Wagner was the guy. They actually couldn't divulge that information. So it was cool just to be offered a role. And then they sent me the script, and I read it. And it was amazingly funny. And so uh, then when I got to the set, you know, obviously I saw uh, Robert Wagner and, you know, it was such a kick to get to work with him, you know. I want to talk about your cooking book. You still go on tour and you were recently in Vegas. How is that going over right. with you? Um, it's going great. It, you know, the, it's, the book is sort of a, a labor of love. Cooking has always been something I've loved. And then the rest of it is stories about my acting career, which it means a lot to me because I don't think that many people out there know what the life of a journeyman actor is like at all. So it's sort of, you know, post-Seinfeld story, uh, pre-Seinfeld stories, post-Seinfeld stories, and then 52 of my own recipes that are interspersed, and a lot of talking about food itself. So 
It's, it's going well. I love doing book signings. I'm going to do one in uh, Phoenix on uh, May 6th at a Barnes & Noble there. So I'm having a good time with that. Well, you had a great crowd, and everybody came out to see you tonight in the Burger Challenge. Is there anything else we could talk about before we wrap it up? No, that's cool. You know, and if anybody wants to, like, see anything or know anything, my website is realsoupnazi.com. And uh, there's always cool stuff on there. And... Uh, I guess that's it. I had a great time, and it was amazing watching uh, uh, Robert eating a uh, eight and a half pound burger in 30 minutes. That's some type of record. <laughs> yeah. Please be sure to visit and support our sponsors.